the majority of people seems to have acrylics so i'm gonna go get my acrylics uh so i'm gonna i can do the demo with the acrylics what i'm doing applies to any kind of um of opaque paint so again gouache acrylics oil anything that is opaque is gonna work with the technique we're gonna use today uh give me just one second to go get my acrylics and my palette and um uh, i was thinking if there was something else no okay that's it okay let me go get my acrylics uh, which luckily were not super far away so uh the color mixing i'm gonna guide you through it's going to use oh wait let me get the product very okay. this is a, a block of palette paper it's like a lot of uh like plasticky kind of like kitchen paper uh sheet that you can use for uh, these are good for acrylics and also oils uh from an environmental point of view, because if you do your mixture here, then you can just wrap it and throw it away uh, in the trash instead of washing the paint in the sink that it's not, you know, it's not the best for, for your ducks and, uh, and the environment. Uh, so I'm gonna try, let me, the bigger palette, let me try to put the camera slightly higher. Oh, I there. So yeah, good. Uh, yeah, acrylics are um, acrylic paint is a synthetic kind of uh, tempera paint, opaque paint that it's made. Uh, the main characteristic is that it dries fast, and when it's dry you can't really rework it and the, in this is different from oil and gouache because in gouache and oil you can blend after in gouache you can reactivate the paint after it's dry and in um, oil it stays wet for long so you can blend while it's wet acrylics will require us to do the blending while the paint is still wet so it's so that's why I wanted to know what was the average medium of the class, so I can uh, I can use um, the one that most of you are mostly using. Okay, so the colors that we're gonna so I have the primary colors here. So I have cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, then white and black. So again, I'm gonna guide you through the mixture with these if you have uh other sets of colors just consider the i'm gonna say the blue the red and the yellow so that's gonna be easier so you whatever blue you have whatever yellow or red you have you can work with those but we're gonna do uh a simple cloud uh on a blue sky so we're mainly gonna use blues and and whites and maybe a little bit of red um, I'm gonna share in the chat now the picture that we're gonna use the picture as a vague reference just to have you know an idea of what we're doing, but we're we're not aiming to make a perfect copy. The goal of this class is to understand how clouds work and how we can render the volume and the shadow of clouds because it's a very specific characteristic shape so that's our main uh goal so let me go in the chat and drop the file there so everyone can access it Okay, so that's the file we're gonna use. I am going to show it uh, also in the share screen for a quick second, so I can talk a little bit about the elements of the clouds. 
So this is the cloud, the, the reference we're gonna use. The important thing when we want to paint clouds is to understand that they're not flat. They are a volume, like a ball, a sphere, like a, a part of a tree. So it, it's a volume in the sky, so it's three-dimensional. And the lights and the shadows that we see, they are created by the sun that, you know, it's somewhere probably up there <laughs> on the right. So the sunlight eats the volume of the, the material that the cloud is made of, vapors and everything. And it creates lights and shadows. So if the light is coming from here, from the right on the big cloud, we can see that here, the light hits the cloud, so it's lighter. And then on the other side, it's darker because it's the side that it's further away from the sun. And on these smaller clouds at the bottom, we can also see here in the smaller cloud, there is light on the right, shadow on the left. And then on these um, more longitudinal clouds, more thin clouds, there is this big shadow because the light comes from above. Imagine that this is like the bottom side of the cloud that it's all in the shadow because it's the side of the cloud that's facing the hurt, okay? So this is the principle that we need to keep in mind when we want to manage the volume of the clouds. So let's get to work. The first thing that we're going to paint is the background. So the the sky and oof. so we're going to paint i'm gonna use for the sky i'm gonna use a flat brush just because it's gonna be quicker in the demo you just use the the biggest brush you have so it's gonna be faster um i'm gonna do one part and then stop and give you a little bit of time to do it uh if you feel that you know everything is going too fast, try to make your painting not too big. So the smaller you make it, the easier it is to you know to paint and follow along. So what we're going to start with is the blue. We're gonna have some. Ah, uh, they were laying horizontal. Sorry, there. <laughs> so all the paint is in the bottom. Okay, so. We have some blue here, and then I'm gonna get some white. Okay, don't put too much paint on the palette because acrylic tends to dry super fast and then it gets, you know, we, we end up wasting paint. Another important thing to keep in mind is to always have, when I paint with acrylics or also with oil, I always have a paper towel or a cloth in my non-painting hand in my case, my left hand, and I have the brush in the other hand because I want to be able to clean my brush of excess paint when I need to do blendings and, uh, and other effects. So uh, I was also thinking, let's put a tiny bit of magenta that we're going to use to do the darker upper part. So. Tiny bit of magenta there. So I want to start, let me move these from there because they're blocking the light. One second, okay, perfect. I'm not gonna dilute the colors with water. We're gonna use the colors dense for now. Uh, it's better to use a square brush for the background just because it's easier to paint the bigger sky with the flat square one. But again, you can do it with any brush you have. It's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna prepare first a darker blue from the upper part, and then I have the lighter uh, medium blue, and then I'm gonna use the white for the for some blending in the background. So to make a darker blue, what I want to do is mix some cyan, some blue, with a little bit of magenta not too much that it becomes purple, just a tiny bit that it becomes darker blue, okay? When we put the paint on the brush, we want the paint to stay on the tip of the bristles, not 
get into the metal, okay? So try to be delicate with your uh, mixing. Okay. Seems dark enough like this for me. And I'm gonna start, and here at the top, I'm going to start just with some, let me try to stop where the camera stopped. Okay, so I have until here. So I'm gonna start with this. You don't need to get to the to the edges of the paper, you can leave it like that. Then before getting the other color, I'm gonna clean tip of my brush like this in the paper and then get the lighter blue and do a, the bottom section with the lighter blue like this. And now before they dry, I want to blend them. So I clean my brush again, and then I go on the line between the two colors and I blend them and I can go a little bit upwards like this. Then I can clean my brush and then I can go a little bit downwards, always with horizontal brush strokes so I can blend the two colors between each other. When you're blending, try not to put too much pressure on the, on the paint to try to be delicate because we, the blending will look softer. Like this doesn't need to be a like perfect blending. And then I'm gonna clean my brush again and I'm gonna get some do another line of the lighter blue like this then i'm going to clean my brush again and i'm going to take a little bit of white and then do a line of white here at the bottom and then again cleaning my brush I'm gonna start blending this upwards with the blue. And you can see that in the background, there are some, it's like it's windy. So there are some light shades of clouds going in different directions. So I'm gonna try also to create the effect of those. And then again, I blend downwards towards the bottom. like this. So the bottom doesn't need to be absolutely like full white. It actually, it's like slightly blended with that blue. I can also take a little bit of the other blue, the darker one, and I can blend that too, a little bit here in the bottom close to where the line of the hurt will be to create more variations in the sky. Because the sky has so many different colors going on all together. And again, when we're working with acrylics, we want to do this blending while the color is wet. If you're using gouache or poster color, you will have like you, you can blend even if the color dries up on your page. You just need to wet your brush and then go softly over and you will be able to blend. So if you're using gouache, you can, you can blend after. So play around a little bit with the white blend. This is, imagine that this is the background behind all the clouds. We're doing that. We're not doing the clouds yet. We're just doing the, the sky in the back. Something like this. Yeah, this is good. So 
do the sky, then we're going to do the this simple landscape at the bottom. When you wait between colors, don't let the paint dry on your brush. Always, like, I have some water here, so always wash the brush in the water. So you wash all the excess color that it's in the brush. Oh, sorry, I'm out of the camera, like this. And then you can dry it up with your paper. And so the brush, it's ready to be used again with different colors, but it's not going to get, you know, clamped with all the dry paint that then it's a nightmare to take out. So I'm going to give you five minutes to do your sky. Take your time. If you have any question, you can drop it in the chat. Take your time, play around with the color, don't like until you find the, the mixture that you like.
is Okay, uh, I've done a small area and we, uh, I can share, okay, wait, I can share the, the, the picture again, which is this, um, just do, uh, like, do an area as big as, like, just don't do, a, like, a painting big, I don't know like this, just do a small thing, like mine, it's going to be okay. Uh, the recording will be sent via the Berlin Drawing Room mailing list. Usually it's not me that uploads it, so you need to keep an eye on their communication. So it's everybody done with the background? Yeah? I see somebody still painting. Okay, so let's work um, on the on the blah, 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 landscape. Uh, there is somebody with a very little kid that it's unmuted. The uh, voice is lovely, but while I'm doing the demo, maybe it's better to mute yourself. I, I love hearing kids' voices. Uh, I need to for you. Okay. We found it. The stray kid. Okay. So to do the landscape, we need to make some green. So I'm going to need and I'm gonna need some yellow for that to mix with some uh with my blue. Okay, yeah, I can also recycle a little bit of the other one. So I'm gonna mix the blue with the yellow. I start with little yellow and the first green will be very like fluorescent. So when we're mixing green to make it more uh, natural, what we do is take a little bit of magenta red, which is the complementary color of green, and that way we can achieve a green that is less fluorescent and more natural. So with this more natural green, what I'm going to do, like we're going to do a little bit of, you know, grassland just to, um, to give a context to our cloud. So what I'm going to do is just fill in here at the bottom. Don't worry about being precise on the edge because we're gonna do that small darker mountain on the edge. So it's gonna be okay. So you can just fill in the bottom area. Like this. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do again, while it's still wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow on the top of my brush and I'm gonna do some 
texture in my grassland. So it's not a flat green, but it's it has some variations. Like this, a little bit at the front. So not too much, just to have a little bit of, you know, different green, <coughs> sorry, different greens going on. Uh, then we're gonna do a slightly darker green by adding more magenta to the mixture. So it's gonna become a darker, more, even more muted green. And with this green, we're going to do our thin mountain in the background, like the, the on the edge between the sky and the grassland. like this, just a thin darker line. And then I'm gonna mix a little bit more blue to the same mixture. And then a little bit more magenta. And then a little bit more yellow, trying to get a dar a even darker, more muted green. So you kind of start almost from a purple and then you add yellow to make it more greenish. And with this one, since it's darker enough, we're gonna do just a little bit of dots and it's not that much darker than the one I did before. Let me try to put some more Mm. Mm. Yeah. And with this, we're just going to drop some dots here and there. So our grassland is not empty. But in a very, we're not being hyper detailed. It's more an impressionistic vibe of the. So the, so the clouds are somewhere and not in an empty space. And when you're done, again, clean the brush in the water and then dry it up with the paper when we wait to do the next step. I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this. Mm.
Uh, yeah, we're working. Uh, hi, Sharon. Welcome. We're working with acrylics, and uh, um, I'm doing the demo with acrylics because most of the group had acrylics, and this is the image we're using as a reference. Okay, when you're done, people with the camera on, when you're done with the background, you can raise it up to the camera and show it to me if you want, before we move on to the, just hold it in front of the camera and I'll go around to see. Oh, nice. That you're Sophie's daughter. <laughs> Hi there, nice to see you. Okay, okay, Najma. Okay, Valentina. Okay, and uh, okay, Karen. Very good, Christine, considering the watercolors. Very good, Rula. Thank you for turning the camera. Oh my God, Sophie, you your daughter have the same shirt. It's lovely. I'm gonna like. I, I'm, me look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm melting. You're adorable. <laughs> Unintentional. Yes. <laughs> okay, Lucky. Okay, Melissa. Let's see. Okay, Lina. Very good. Okay, Marika. Okay, Marie. Very nice, Kay. Okay, Kate. Very cool. Very cool. Good job, people. Nice. Lovely. Oh, okay. Very good. Lovely. Very nice, very nice. Good job, people. Okay, so let's start doing the actual clouds. Bye, Sharon. Um, okay, so to paint the clouds, what we're going to do is, so when we paint with opaque colors, the order in which we paint things makes all the difference uh, because we can't start coloring, putting colors randomly on the, on the canvas, on the paper, and, and it may work, but if we have a system when we paint, things are easier to do. So usually when we work with opaque paint, the best system that we can use is starting from the medium tone, then working on the highlights and then working on the shadows. So. What we're going to do now is do a medium tone for our clouds, which is going to be kind of the lightest gray that we can see. And to make this lightest gray, I'm gonna start with the white. If I have a little bit of leftover dark blue here that I'm gonna start mixing. So very little because I want like, kind of like a dirty white, that's what I want to get. So something like this. So I'm using the darker uh, blue that I made before mixing the cyan with the magenta. And so I get this kind of very light gray color. And I'm gonna start shaping. Oh, it, it looks like ice cream and now I'm, I'm getting hot. So. Uh, Vaccination left down, don't you read down, is, wait, 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 wait. Uh, again, we have somebody that forgot to mute themselves. Okay. Uh, so I was saying, let's start shaping the cloud. So I'm gonna start from the center and I'm gonna go towards the edges. And oh, I could actually use the, let's use a round brush for the cloud, which is gonna be much better. So let me wash this brush and put it away. Why complicate our life trying to do a soft cloud with a flat brush? Okay. 
So flat brush, washed and put away. Let's get the round brush. So with the, uh, with the brush, we start from the center and then we go towards the edges with this kind of uh, round brush stroke. And if in some areas, my brush strokes are the, the brush, it's drier and see it catches a little bit on the texture of the paper, that's okay because it's kind of how edge, the edges of the clouds are. So we're gonna use that uh, at our advantage. So maybe I can go a little bit higher here. So I'm gonna start like this and just do the base color of the cloud. If the shape it's not identical to the one in the reference picture, it doesn't matter. Again, it's a reference picture. Nobody's gonna come to us and say, hey, that cloud doesn't look like that other cloud. Also clouds keep moving because there is wind, the shape is not static. Maybe we're drawing that cloud five minutes later, nobody will know. It will have already have changed shape. So I'm gonna go like this, fill in all my cloud. So this is my main cloud. And then I'm gonna move on to the bottom cloud too. They don't need to be that differentiated. I'm just doing the base of all the cloud area as if it's just one big cloud. So here, I'm just gonna do the upper part in the same way. So with these round brush strokes like this, and then the bottom part, I'm gonna do it with horizontal brush strokes because the, the bottom of the cloud has this more flat development. My cloud feels a little bit of center. I'm gonna move it slightly more here. this. And then again, with a little bit of color, I'm going to do the small stray pieces of cloud floating around a little bit here, like this. And this is my base color for the cloud. What I want to do then it's, you know, it's shape it, but we're gonna do, because the shaping it's a little bit, um, I, I want you to give you time to do the base of the cloud and then we're gonna do the shaping after. Don't worry if your color dries up because we're gonna, we still have color left and we're gonna use that to do the blending later. So first do the flat shaping of your cloud. Still feel it's too small, this cloud. Hmm. So, Take out a couple of minutes and place your cloud on the paper. As usual, wash your brush, clean it before you pose so it doesn't dry up. Take some minutes, do your the base of your cloud.
Okay, so if you have the base of your cloud there, we're going to start to work on the shadows. So let's prepare. Uh, we need to have to, to shape the cloud. We need to have ready the pure white. Or maybe, no, let's do it later. Let's start with this and let's then make a slightly darker one. So I need a little bit of white. We're gonna do the, the last, the pure white at the end. So I'm gonna, again, try to get a little bit of the darker blue. Mine is already dry. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more purple here. And then uh, I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of white. So I need to create the dark color for the shadow. I can also add a little bit of the green I did before because the color of what's below reflects on the cloud above. So It's kind of like, yeah, it has a slight green undertone because it's a light sky. So the color is a little bit, yeah. This looks okay. So what I want to do, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this as kind of as a process. So I'm gonna start from the dark side here I'm gonna do one area at the time so I don't have to worry that it dries up. So I'm gonna start with this part of the cloud here. So I'm gonna put the color in small brush strokes on the area that is dark here on this side, like this. And then I'm going to clean my brush, take the color I was using before, the medium gray, and then go on the edge of where I just put the color. And then, like we did before, I'm going to blend the area between the two. Clean, always clean your brush and then blend the area between the two colors. Like this. And basically you can go back and forth between the darker color and the lighter color to sculpt and shape your, your cloud. So you can add more dark if it's darker in some areas. Then I can move on to another section so I can take my dark color and then start putting it where it's darker. And don't worry too much if it's not exactly the same shape. As long as the light comes from the same direction, that's gonna be, that's gonna be enough. It doesn't need to be identical. Again, as I said before, we're doing a cloud inspired to this one. If it looks slightly different, it, it means that it's the same cloud five minutes later when the wind started moving it around. So don't worry. Like this, again, clean the brush, then take the lighter color and go along the edge. like this, and then along the edge. All of this while always while it's still wet, hopefully. And then clean your brush and you can go blend between the two colors.
So the transition becomes slightly softer. <clears throat> We're still gonna put the, the highlights later, so don't worry about that. Now again, with this dark color, I'm gonna go on, there are two sections. There is the bottom cloud that is quite flat, and then there is the smaller, rounder clouds here in the middle. So I'm gonna focus on those now. So I'm gonna focus on these small round clouds here. Then clean your brush, get the lighter color, and then place the lighter color beside the darker one. Clean the brush as much as you need to. like this, and then like before, we blend in between. Always, when we do the blending, as I said before, remember to be very soft, like don't put too much pressure on the paint. So you want to like slight delicate caress. like this, and then we're gonna do the bottom cloud that is the darker one. So I'm gonna take my leftover dark color. I don't have much, let's hope it's enough. And I'm gonna do this darker brush strokes here. Oof, I, am, I think I will have to redo this. Let's see if I can manage to make it be enough. Uh, okay, barely enough for my bottom cloud. And here at the bottom, I'm gonna, when it's still wet, I'm gonna take a little bit of the gray, again, that I used before, uh, the, the gray, grayish green, and I'm gonna put a little bit of that just at the bottom, because this cloud gets the reflection of the grassland. So I'm gonna then dry up my brush and blend that, those two colors together to make the bottom cloud even darker. And again, with the same color, there are a couple of areas which are even darker, stronger shadows. So I can blend them like that. A little bit like this. Okay, maybe slightly darker here in this corner. The more the colors you have in your painting are connected with each other or are mixed by, you know, previous mixture, that mix with the same colors or with the same shades, the more uh, harmonic and organic your painting will look like. 
because that's how nature works. Like there are bounce lights and bounce colors all over. And I'm gonna dare to put a little bit of this darker color up here too. Just like a very light shading because I, I feel that this corner of the cloud needs even a little bit more punch like this. Ah, looks good. Okay, so play around with this. I'm gonna give you five, seven minutes. Like I'm gonna give you time to do this without rush. So you can play around, make corrections and, and shape your cloud like this. And then we're going to do the highlights, okay? Take your time. If you have any questions, I'm here. Don't be shy.
Okay, if you're done with this step, you can show it to me before we move on to the last highlights. So we can see, I can give you some feedback if there is something to, to fix before we do the final highlights. Okay, uh, Christine, with the watercolor, it's harder, but you, you know, you shape it nicely. You know what you can try to do, Christine? You can darken the sky around the cloud so it's going to pop out more so do the sky around darker uh anybody else just hold it up okay najma you can uh, not this, i'm not really happy because i find it very hard to blend yeah it's, but uh, you can do it a little bit darker on this side before we work we go to the white, but you said you're, uh, it's one of the first times you yeah. use acrylics. Yeah. So it's normal to struggle. The important thing is to understand the principle and then you mm. can and figure out how to do it. There's gonna be the recording so you can try to do it again. You don't have to do it right the first time, especially if it's- Okay, okay. maybe the brush is not the appropriate one, maybe. Or I could be using the feeling of the wetness of the paint. And yeah. Sophie, okay, but are you only doing one, Sophie and daughter? No, you're not, yeah. you do for yours, okay. Oh. And Ashani and mother, very nice. You, yeah, 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 very good. And Ashani, you can do some darker shadows on the bottom too. And then Rula, a little bit more to the left like lower or behind because I only see one part. Okay, yes, dark enough, very good. Melissa, okay. Valentina, okay. Yeah, good, very nice dark sky. Ange, very nice scattered clouds. Okay. Uh, Andrew, keep in mind the side where you want the light to come from when, because you have more than one cloud. So keep in mind where the light is coming. And uh, let me see the second page. Oh, very nice. Lena, okay. Good job, Kate. Okay, Marie. Okay, Le Leila. And okay. I, I have made it uh, with watercolors. Yeah, the, you have the you had the, the white though, right? No, I it's only white paper. I washed it. Ah, you washed it. Okay, yeah, you pulled out the paint. Good. If you have some white for the highlights, it will give more pop. But that's okay too. And okay, okay. And okay, Marie. Nice, nice. I love your clouds. Very good. Okay, so let's get to the final touch which is going to be um, to put the white highlights. Hopefully we still have some medium color, still wet on the palette, hopefully. Um, so we're gonna take the white now, the pure white, and we're gonna be very systematic. We have the light coming from here. So I'm gonna start from the edge of the cloud. So I'm gonna put the pure white, here on the edge of the cloud. I'm always gonna work one section at the time. So I'm gonna put the pure white here and then going under like this. Always small rounded brush strokes like this. And then this, I can also go a little bit here. And let's do a small section at the time. I clean, oops, I clean my brush 
and then I take a little bit of the medium color, again, the transition color I was using before, and I just put it on the edge to blend. So I can blend. And the important thing when we're working with the white is that we don't always have to blend. We need to observe each section because in some areas like up here, there is actually quite a sharp contrast between the light, the white, and the, the, light, the part in the shadow. So we want to keep the strong contrast where we have, you know, like strong transition and then softer transition in other areas. So we can modulate also that effect. And we do one small piece of cloud at the time. So here again, I have the strong white here along the edge, goes down this side and then here in the center, I have some white that connects with that. And then both of these blend softly downwards. So here I'm gonna add a little bit of my medium tone and blend the color softly going downward like this. And then I'm gonna move to this bottom part here. So you see that here at the bottom, yes, it's lighter on the edge, but it's not as sharp as the upper part. So I also want to, uh, to modulate that. So I can start with a little bit of white here along the edge of the cloud below, like this. not too much paint. And then I can put a little bit of medium again to blend. Like this. And then I'm gonna move on this upper part. So I start with the white. And now I move downward and I have here a white peak, white part here in this point. And in this part, when we put the white, it's very important to, to take care of the, the shape of the shadow that I'm, the, of the cloud that I'm painting. So like not random, white but like try to put it exactly where the shape where it's shaping like this and then on this upper edge too like this and then i'm gonna take my medium color and do some blending around here. Because some areas are softer transitions. Like this. And here the transition is a little bit sharper, so I can leave the white with a sharper angle. So it's important to modulate between some sharper, some more blended, and then I'm gonna take more white and go here in the back. There is almost, it's almost a rim light here on this side, like this. And then there is this small, triangle of white here. And then let's move to the second layer of clouds. So the, the small rounded clouds. So with the white, I start here from the, from the edge. So here I have this stronger white edge here at the bottom.
like this. And here there is a soft transition. So I'm going to take my medium color and soften the transition a little bit here. Like this. And then again, clean the brush, don't forget, take more white. And then I'm gonna do this sm super small little peaks of white that I see here on the edge. It's not a continuous line, but there are small white peaks that separate the smaller cloud from the bigger cloud behind. And here there is a piece of the cloud that looks like the head of a bird. <laughs> then, you know, if you do like me, then you're painting clouds and then you're suddenly getting distracted by the shapes you see in the clouds. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so these small peaks and again, some areas we can do softer transitions. I'm gonna put a little bit of darker again because I put too much white. So I'm trying to recover my dark color from before. Something like this. Okay. Then we were doing here. I'm doing like in, in lines going downwards. So I have a system and I don't get lost. So we do this, then we have again, a little bit of white peaks here and then on the smaller clouds here and then a soft medium transition. Like this, and then I have one last line of white peaks here just above the um, the horizontal, the, the longitudinal horizontal line clouds, and then a little bit here again, horizontal peaks at the bottom. Then a little bit on the smaller clouds too. Like this. And transition color like this, nice. And you can see the moment we you can wash your brush. Then always wash your brush. Um, when you do the, um, oof, I need to put glue on this brush. When you put the white, then suddenly you know everything pops out. That's the power of the highlights. So put your highlights, take your time, and uh, when you're done, uh, you can, if you like, you can raise it up, you can use the raise your hand function. Uh, if you want, you can uh, share, you can show me your finished painting and we can have a little round of feedback and you can tell me one thing that it worked, that you understood, that you know you're gonna keep, and then one thing that you're still struggling or that you realize you will do in a different way next time. So when you're done, you can raise your hand or and then wait until I call you because if you unmute yourself directly, it becomes we're many people. So I, I need to find out who wants to talk when. So take your time to finish and then if you want to share. If people are not familiar with Zoom, there is the, in at the bottom uh, where all the functions are, there is the raise hand option. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, if you're, running away before the round of feedback please uh in the chat leave uh like you can leave your name where you're connecting from and where you found the 
the link for the class. And before I forget, I also need to, because people always ask me, I'm gonna put you the, um, let me find my Instagram link. Okay. Everything is here. And I'm also going to put, because I always forget, uh, let me copy the link to the Berlin drawing room. If you're interested, uh, like if you're not in the, um, in the mailing list yet, you can add yourself to the mailing list there. So you, on the website, so you can uh, receive the link to the recording. And, uh, and if you want, I'm going to teach a intro to painting workshop uh, starting, oh, I forget when it's, I'm so bad at this. Uh, I think it's starting, wait, let me check on the website. On June 18, I'm gonna start an intro to painting workshop, but you find everything. Um, uh, okay, you can find everything on the website. Ah, uh, and some, but yeah, I think it's everything. Instagram, very in the room, tip jar, because people always ask for the tip jar and I, I set one up <laughs> for this reason. Okay. So, um, whoever is finished and wants to share, wave, make a sign, give me a sign of life so I know. Okay, Valentina, unmute yourself. Hi, so um, thank you so much for the workshop. This is my work and I was actually struggling the whole way. <laughs> so at first I really found the mixing part is really hard. So you see there is not so many variation in my colors and it was really difficult. And then the volume was also a bit hard to achieve. Maybe like I didn't follow a reference picture. So I tried to put some paint like there and there from my mind and then I finished this quite flat image. But it's not, I don't think it's that flat. I think that if you add a darker shadow on the bottom, mixing the, if you have a little bit of the color of the green with the blue and you just darken the bottom, it will come together because the upper part is quite soft. And like, I can see the shape of the cloud there. Oh, so, thank you. Maybe okay. like I'll, I'll continue after the workshop, but anyway, like really found it interesting how like the smallest variation can affect the whole volume. So yeah, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Valentina. I'm happy that, you know, you, you managed to, to, to follow along and uh, clouds are awesome. I'm always all for clouds. And then we have Marie who raised the hand. Go Marie, unmute yourself. You need to unmute, unmute, unmute. You're still muted. Wait, you're still muted, Marie. I can't hear you. Oh, do. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. sorry. So, um, uh, thank you again. Uh, it's just that I'm wondering uh, with those shadows, it's like if you don't have it in your head, it's like you put it like in, in anywhere and you don't know what you're doing. And uh, and after that, the form is not quite bubbly. <laughs> it's like a little flat, a little heavy. I don't uh, know. It's I think that the, your shadows are in the correct position. What is okay. missing, it's a little bit more transition color between your light color and your dark one. So if you put a little okay. bit more intermediate color, it will yeah. round up itself okay. more, I feel. And, okay. And then we, we can start, you know, you can start taking pictures of cloud that you find pretty and start to observe where the lights and the shadows are, because once you understand the principle, it's all clouds work in the same way. It's just the shape, mm -hmm. that, but the, the principle is the same. Well, thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, Marie. Bye. Thank uh, you. Uh, hey. 
Um, thank you. I got a bit lost with the um, cloud of link. But hey, the thing is, can you put it a little bit more backward so I can see? The, okay. Because uh, I think that your old work, it's quite like the colors are dark and intense. So your cloud actually fits well with your overall palette, you know, when because the the sky is so dark uh, on top and also the the land is, is quite dark. So that cloud fits well. If you want, you can wait until it dries so it doesn't mix too much. And you can put just some uh, more uh, highlights of white just on the edge on this side, not mixing it, just keeping the white clean little bit there for you know the extra bit. But I think the overall balance of tone, like, it all fits together, you know? You don't have to do a copy of mine or a copy of the picture. You have to do your own cloud. And as long as the system works, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. And then Kate. So I liked, um, the hardest part was the highlighting at the end. I'm not actually used to acrylics and how fast it dries, so. It was hard to get the highlighting and do the blending with it being so light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, it's like, again, very balanced. And I love that you use, you know, a proper cardboard canvas. So <laughs> you are, have a nice painting you can put on your wall. It's not just a study. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. And then Melissa, unmute. Unmute. Um, yeah, my, the hardest time I had was actually that I, I'm not sure if I need to mix more paint or learn to really mix the same color, like multiple times, um, and have it be the same color. Cause my biggest problem was that I was mixing small amounts of paint and it kept drying. Mm. So then when I would go to blend like the middle tone again, it was like, ah, it's dry. And then I would be trying to mix it like quickly mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to mix the new color before the highlight was dry on the, so I think it's like practice, practice, practice <laughs> as, yeah. as everything. <laughs> it also depends a lot of where you are, like count, like geographic wise, if you have yeah. a lot of or it's if it's very hot it's gonna dry faster and in other places it's gonna dry slower so you kind of um i realize that in germany compared to you know mediterranean country because there is less humidity in the air the color dries so much faster yeah and, you know you, you kind of need to pace yourself also to your geographical situation for these things but on the other hand that's kind of nice because if i was doing this outside um it wouldn't be like with oil where you need you know to be super careful with the canvas trying to get it home because it's not going to be dry for a month so it's kind of uh, like i realized like oh acrylic is kind of a good um sketching medium actually yeah. It is, it is. Good. Thank you, Melissa. And Thank you. Mar Marika, go. Okay. Hi, thanks. Uh, so I think I was sort of doing okay. And then the last bit, the adding the highlights um, messed me up more. So, um, and I sort of lost some of the texture that I had managed to achieve. So now I'm trying to fix it. Um, I had a similar struggle trying to get the different shades, the middle and the, um, the, the middle and the darker shadows. So I'll probably do this again and try it again, but. Yeah, yeah, it, it, like it's good to have like the colors still there. Maybe you can have also a second brush that if you feel that you're losing your shadow, you can like, take the dark the color and, and put it back there again so you can balance yourself. Uh, yeah, but it, again, it's a question of measuring the amount of paint on paper. So when you blend, it doesn't like ah, overcome everything aggressively. So, but it's like, I think if you add a little bit more shadow on this side, it will 
run without even touching the right side is perfect if you put again a little bit more shadow on the left it's gonna be pretty awesome thank you marika okay thank you and a shiny well, some of it works okay this is mine oh super soft <laughs> thank nice you. You, did, you made very, very soft clouds. So how it was, one thing that it worked and you understood and you're gonna use next time. And then one thing that you will do different next time. And I, I will definitely be using the blending technique with the mixing and darkening the shadows of the base and the lighting. Uh, and something I would like to work on is applying too much water for watercolor to create uh, to dry yeah because poster mm. colors but to to you know to mix them with water so you need to modulate the right. because this is what we are using is poster color and uh, oh, to get the desired effect um, it's uh, slightly difficult uh, now the shades uh, are a little uh, different yeah so one thing you can try with poster colors uh you can put you can do the blending in a different way so okay. you put your medium color and then you put your dark and then okay. you white all separated and then okay. you let it dry and then you wet the brush and with the brush just lightly damp not super wet right. you do that small round brush stroke and right. they blend together more slowly because that's right. the characteristic of poster color and gouache that you can reactivate them right and, you know it kind it, it's kind of more practical for these things too so you can just place all your tones and then you blend them after so right. you, you can try to do that too right. it was lovely having you here again ashani i'm very happy to see you and to meet your mother <laughs> same here i'm very happy and, to join this class as well it was lovely awesome. And um, I just want to add, this has been an extremely calming uh, class. Uh, the ending and uh, merging colors, I mean, it has been uh, really wonderful, really a calming class. So uh, the reason that I told my daughter when she was uh, looking forward to this class that I think I'll also sit with you this time. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I mean, more than anything else, more than the shading and everything, the, the color blending, uh, painting is just such a very calming thing. So uh, it was uh, wonderful. Uh, it was, thank you. That like this could have uh, been like a calming, relaxing experience for you. And yes. clouds also as a subject. Because Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Very shapeless, true. So there isn't that much pressure. Like it's going to look like a cloud anyway. So mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's nice to paint things like this sometimes. Mm -hmm. Very true. Thank you. Thank really you. enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you in the next one soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And Rula. Uh, okay. So, one, one thing that it worked, and one thing you will do different. Um, well, the cloud should be uh, bigger so I can work with it better. Uh, actually, it's the main subject and I didn't give it uh, enough space. So next time, definitely I will use the master. And I will, I will do it again, this one, this exercise, because um, I tried to follow. It's not bad. It shows like a cloud, but it's not that. <laughs> it's not bad. I need more practice, definitely. Yeah. But thank you for all the insights and everything. Thank you so much. And remember that, like, what we do in class, there is no expectation from me that you, like, do a perfect cloud the first time or, like, during the class. What I care is that you understand the process and the principle behind, because that way you can then practice on your own. So exactly and practice it again. So if that is clear, that's all you need and all I need. Thank yeah, you. So yeah, true. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. And you too.
Um, Karen, no, wait, yes, Karen. Unmute yourself. Okay, so um, I, I had a hard time because this was all wet when I put the mountains and I just had a, like a hard time with the transition of mm -hmm. softness. But then you said with the brush circle, that is that what you were doing? Yeah, like with the, when you want to blend, you clean your brush so you don't have any paint on your brush. And then you do this soft circular movement between the two colors so they can blend together. So first okay. you place the colors on the canvas and then you dry up the brush and then you, or you can use another brush. I, I did everything with one, so you could see how to manage everything with one, but you can also have one brush just for shading. But even that, you should clean it often so it doesn't build up paint. And so you can try with that. But it has a nice, like, it has a lot of colors and, and shades. It's not flat, so I think it's a good, like, yeah, Thank cloud. You. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. And then, wait, I see Lucky holding up the, the painting for a while, so yeah. I can't I show you. So how did it go? Yeah, I think I did a mistake with the spacing first thing. Um, uh, then my cloud thing, it, it has come down like with a little space. It's looking with all like elaborated these guys. And I found difficulty with that merging thing, that, as everyone said. Uh, that thing was a big uh, struggle for me and basically creating clouds is one <laughs> uh, big task for me it was like i don't know how to <laughs> go on with that. even if you add less space your cloud uh -huh. has an organic shape to me and yeah. i like I find it soft. And again, I think if you put a little bit more shadow on this side and you leave okay. the right one as it is, everything okay. will come together. Okay. And you know, thank you. Clouds are, you know, it, when we do something new, it's always a little bit complicated. Yes. Yeah. Good yeah. that you tried and you gave yourself the time to experiment. So from yeah. here, practice. Thank, thank you for you. that opportunity. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Lina. Yeah, uh, sorry, you here. Uh, hmm. I, I think my biggest problem was to stop somewhere and to say that it's good enough and not um, add more color or get darker because then I was too dark and I added more white and then it was too white again and then there were too many, too many layers and I got a bit confused with the colors, yeah, and the shading. Yeah, but it is like, uh, it has volume, it has the shadows. I understand what you mean. Like when you start, it's like when you want to cut your bangs and you're like, oh, it's not straight enough. Wait, I'm gonna, and then you end up with a super short bang because yeah, yeah. Acting. it's kind of that, you know, constant correction thing. And one thing you can do in that case is stop for a second, let the paint dry yeah. and then go over it again when it's dry so at least you're working like it's not mixing all the layers together because then it can become a little bit overwhelming to predict what's going to happen yeah. if you have layers at the same time wet so if you get confused take a break let it dry and then start from from top okay but, yeah good job. thank you thank you Okay, um, is there anyone else that wants to share? If not, we can, uh, I think that everybody, I don't know, let me wave your hand or do something like give me a sign of life. Okay, Najma, go. Unmute yourself, please, please, please. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I just want to know which colors did you blend in to create the shadows because I didn't get it. Okay, so colors, I didn't have magenta, so I. So the colors I use are cyan blue, the primary colors. So cyan mm -hmm. blue, magenta red, and uh, primary yellow. 
the first mm. color that we mixed, the dark one, was cyan mm. with a little bit of magenta. Then the one of the sky was just pure cyan. Mm. And then at the bottom to blend, we just put the white. And this is mm. the best. Then for the cloud, the medium color of the cloud, which is this, mm. I made with the white and a tiny bit of the color that I use for the dark sky above. Okay. And that I made in white. Mm. Then we made the grass with the green, with cyan yellow, and a little bit of magenta. Magenta, okay. I, if you I, don't like magenta, if you don't have magenta, any other red would work. Well, no? Any red is okay. I could say just yellow, blue, and red. It would be the same. Oh. The tone would be different, but the principle is the same. Mm. I feel like I'm giving you a recipe for a cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then to do the dark green, you just mm. put a little bit more blue in the green. Mm. It becomes darker. Mm. And for the darker shadows here, again, I use the sky color, but with mm. less white. So it, it's all mixed. And then for the darker shadow of the cloud, I use this, the dark green mixed mm. on the medium on this one. Okay, thank you. You're thank you. I need to yeah, practice and try it again. <laughs> Of the but I really enjoyed the class. Very good. My, as it was my first, um, yeah, you know, acrylic class. So yeah, it's interesting. The only thing I found hard was uh, it dries out very quickly, very quickly. Uh, yeah. uh, when if it, it where you are, it's very hot and dries fast. Try to work on smaller areas of the painting at the time. So mm. in the, like just do one little piece at the time, so you don't have to run after the paint. Oh. Mm. Okay, okay, good to. Thank you very much. So before we say goodbye, I would like to take a group picture of paintings. So if you can turn your camera on without your face, just hold your cloud to the screen. Hold it there until I say, uh, until I tell you, you can take it down. Uh, Wait, let me just triple check that I have everybody with the camera on visible. Give me one second. Okay. Wait. Okay, I'm gonna just take a, a, a picture of both pages of the gallery. Hold it there, hold it still. Give me one second. Ah, where is my screenshot option? Coming, huh? One second, one second, one second. Stay there, stay there. Hold it there. Okay. Hold it still, first one. Wait, I have to do, go to the second page. Here, hold it still. Perfect. Thank you so much. So if, uh, if uh, does anybody have any other questions or things they want to say, share or whatever? No? Everything okay? Good. <laughs> okay. So to say goodbye, I usually ask everybody, unmute yourself. So everybody, unmute yourself so we can all say goodbye. <laughs> yes, <they're> very loud. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.